we all came to see Travis. And let me tell you something. He was just trying to act like he was so professional as a football player. I'm so focused. Then he came out there with that stupid mustache. <laughs> trying to act like... <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, a Wondery show produced by Wave Sports and Entertainment and presented by Timberland and Vans. How about it? I love some butters, there baby. Go. Gotta love the uh, checkerboard Vans, too. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Yeah. Cincinnati Bearcats alums, and uh, we're officially, in quotes, this is not me saying this, uh, sexiest podcast host alive, according to People Magazine, the Reader's Poll. So, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of people vote on who the uh, sexiest podcasters were. And, who are these uh, other guys? These sure other enough, guys? sexy ass Jason Kelsey uh, wins it for everyone, as always. Everybody tune it in, subscribe on YouTube, Wondery Plus, or wherever you get your podcasts, and follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show. That is with one S. Jason, tell the people what we got coming up. Oh, yeah. No surprise here, everyone. We got a great episode lined up for you guys. <laughs> Baby. Starting with the big road wins for the Chiefs and Eagles, all the right Washington now. Hail Mary, the National Tight Ends Day, bull crap, and all the rest of the biggest storylines from week eight. How about it, man? And I'm also fired up about our guest for this week's show. That's right. She's an incredible Emmy Award winning actress and Travis's co-star in Grotesquerie. Yeah. The one and only Nisi. Nash. Nisi Nash Betts. How about it, man? She's uh she's the absolute best. To do it, I promise you, she's uh, she's so fun to work with, and I can't wait to have her on the show uh, and show you guys uh, the fun dynamic that she has with everybody around her. Man, it's so much fun. That's right. Cannot help but smile when you're talking to Nisi. That is for dang <laughs> sure. But first, as always, as always, we're going to start with a little bit of that new news. New news coming in hot. New news is brought to you by MetaQuest. Expand mm. your world with MetaQuest. Philly special Christmas album pre-order available November 1st. That's, That's right. right. Starting at 9 a.m. Eastern on November 1st, you can officially pre-order the third installment of the Philly special Christmas album at phillyspecialchristmas.com. How about it, man? Jason, you uh, you you guys have been doing this for the past three years. and We have. Who you're getting on this, these albums keep going up and up, and it just gets so much cooler to, to see you uh, – have your musical uh, career take off like this? <laughs> yeah, my musical career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those, the all the uh, all the heights music classes and all the heights uh, they paid yeah, off. Yeah, it all paid off, baby. You're not playing <laughs> the sax, man. You're using that. You're just using that voice. That sultry that, voice. Oh yeah, that raspy east side of Cleveland voice. You got that. <laughs> um, we've got a preview of Lane Johnson's rendition of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. How oh, nice. It? Let's hear what my dog Lane's hitting on. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> Rudolph the Red. Oh, this is gold. This thing's it's nice. <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Dude, that is so fucking good. Shout out to Lane. Lane is a he's got a sneaky voice, man. Now Lane's uh, I've known for yeah for a long time. Even when we started doing this three years ago, Lane he can he can hold a tune, man. Very sneaky, like country, kind of southern. You like in another lifetime, Lane could have been a country it. music artist. No question it. about it. He's got that voice, that iconic draw. Yeah, he's got that he's got that country star like aura to him too. No, yeah, he fits in with the vibe. Well, everybody in the comments were appreciating Jason's fuck yeah at the end. Jason, you haven't seen this yet? No. Fuck yeah! (laughs) And we didn't get a chance to talk about this on the show yet. Jason, you got to work with Stevie Nicks. Yeah, baby. Jason, what can you tell the 92 percenters about this? Stevie Nicks, the legendary Stevie Nicks, came on and did a duet with me. Nice. Which in itself, like pretty crazy to actually be on a track with Stevie Nicks. I mean, absolutely unreal. Like, probably the most legendary female singer, especially of her generation, and maybe, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just like a, such a unique voice, such a unique artist that was good for so long. The fact that I'm singing with her, this legend, so cool, man. is pretty unreal. And, and isn't um, she just the best in person, too? 
one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. <laughs> like, mean, blows you away. To, like, she was an absolutely beautiful personality. She, you could tell she likes, she loves people. She loves music. She loves the art of making music. Brought a breath of fresh air into the recording studio. We were able to actually get in the studio at the same time, which is really hard. A lot of times when we're adding a lot of the big time artists that are actually like doing this for a living, a lot of times they come on, but we have to like kind of, you know, they can't come into the studio because they're busy doing their own thing, right? Yeah. This was really cool. We got, we were able to get Stevie in studio, actually sing together, which like I'll be able to cherish that memory for the rest of uh, my lifetime. Oh, that's so cool, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. It was just really, really cool. We got Stevie, Boys to Men is on the track. Yeah. That Travis and I sing Dude, on. Dude, now yep. that. You want to talk about like full circle. That is exactly who like when I think of Christmas music from like my childhood, like obviously you got the legendary songs from like before we were even born, but like growing yeah, up Frank like when the, Oh yeah, you already know. But the songs that were created as like we were growing up, I mean, Boys the Men had so many bangers and they're they like when I hear their voice, it kind of like reminds me or puts me in that Christmas mood. And uh to be on the same uh same song as them is <laughs> it's fucking insane. Yeah, when they when we first started doing that song, I actually didn't know if it was going to work because it's like an R and B song. And when I think of Christmas music, I do not think of R and B. What? No, You're crazy. I don't. I just I, I think of you know Frank Sinatra. I think of pop music. Like you know, you got your Mariah Carey, your Justin Timberlake, and this is before Boys to Men. This is just when Zach wrote the song, right? Zach Miller writes the song, and I'm already like. I don't know. This doesn't feel right. And the more you listen to it, you're just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Actually, Zach killed this. <laughs> R&B is perfect. And I think we all really were hoping that, you know, maybe there was a chance in hell that Boys to Men would want to co come and collaborate on this with us. And sure enough, uh, they hopped on to a Christmas time in Cleveland Heights, which is even more special to have a song tributing our hometown and in some ways, a representation for everybody who's longing for home around the holidays was pretty special. It was awesome, man. I can't wait to to play that thing while we're in the Christmas spirit and snow's falling and there's presents under the tree, baby. How about that? Well, there's great news for all you 92 percenters. We're debuting the Heights Hotline on our Wondery Plus exclusive episode dropping this Thursday, October 31st. That's right. The interns have been through all of your voicemails, and you guys did not disappoint. <sighs> We're going to listen to a few of our favorites on the Wondery Exclusive, so make sure you tune in. We told you guys the topic this week was relationships, but it seems like some of you didn't get the assignment. Let's take a look at this clip. Kelsey! What's up, guys? What's up? My name's Kurt from Kansas City. Hey, Kurt, Kurt from KC. about relationships. <laughs> okay. The thing I do know is, how about them cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Kurt. All right. How about those cheese, baby? Cheese. Hey. Not much we can favorite. do with that, but love the fandom, Kurt. Yeah. Once again, the hotline number, the Heights hotline number is 929-399-7260. If you want to get access to all our bonus content, make sure you sign up on the Wondery Plus app today. Wednesday, October 30th is the last day you can redeem the offer for three months free of Wondery Plus. Visit Wondery.com slash New Heights offer to redeem. And, and uh, that go ahead. And that does it for new news brought to you by MetaQuest. Expand your world. How about that? I love expanding my world. Fan mentions of the week. Let's move on to some fan mentions, baby. On last week's episode, Jason accepted Pat McAfee's and Van's challenge to kick a field goal in his Tim's, in his butters, baby. Yo. For a great cause. And now our good friend, Eagles kicker, Jake Elliott, is also getting involved. Why don't we check out this clip? <laughs> All right, Jason, heard what you said about kickers. I'd like to oh, politely crap. disagree. <laughs> Glad back if he called you out last week, challenged you to kick in your Tims. This week, I'm going to kick in some Vans, a superior kicking shoe. <laughs> superior <laughs> kicking shoe. He's got the Vans on. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Something tells me it's going right down the... Oh, yeah. I mean... A nice slight draw, just how you, pretty. Just how you cook it up. Very pretty. Yeah, he must have. He just, he's done that before. He just did a nice, easy thirty-five yard field That's all goal. It's be, Jason. You just got to hit it right on the nose, man. You just got to hit it right there on the button. I'm gonna have to tow it. You can't go do a soccer style kick with Tim's on. Dude, You're not yes. gonna get the proper ankle flexion, the boots. So I'm gonna have to go Lou Groza. I'm gonna have to tow it. Yeah. So instead of going, typically kick, you go one, two, three steps back, 
two to the side. This one, you're just going three back. Three back. And I'm just going to. Man, I'm not going to lie. The toe, there's a lot of room for air on the toe. It's a, the chance this thing goes straight is minimal. Let's see this trick kick, though. What's your trick kick? What's a trick kick? Oh, what? So now he's just now he's just showing <laughs> now off. Now he's just showing off. That's crazy. How the who is this guy? A fucking sorcerer? Is this guy a Jedi? How the fuck did he do that with his feet? It's pretty impressive. That is very now he impressive. did it in Vans. Like he didn't even do it in his regular cleats. Yeah, which Vans are? I mean, like he said, premium kicking shoe. Ninety-two percenters and Pat McAfee and Jake Elliott. Uh, we have a big announcement. I'm officially going to Happy Valley. That's right, Penn State yeah! this week. To try State and kick, PA. to try and kick. I've never been. I've never been to Penn State. Oh yeah, Happy you're Valley. Love it, man. That's your I've kind gone of place. fly fishing in the area, but never been to State College. So it's your kind of college. You'd like that place. I'm kind of excited about this for multiple reasons. I am a little bit concerned. I don't know if you guys saw this this week. Somebody tore their ACL warming up. Did you yeah, see this? that wasn't that wasn't a good that wasn't a good one. This is this is one of those don't drink and drive kids. Ah. Ah, Lee. Oh my gosh. What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, dude, when you don't have cleats on, this what is why, are we doing? This is why I'm going straight on. I'm not giving a plant leg. I'm just going straight <laughs> through. <laughs> dude, there's no way you make this straight on. I can't do it. I've n I have I mean, the Tim's is a big it's 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 a factor that is going to cause me a lot of issues. If you you don't have to get like the flexion of the ankle, I don't think you have to go straight on. You can just go sideways. I don't. I think the only chance I'm making it in Tim's is going straight on. I don't think I, I can do this arc style. I think you go more side. All right, dude. I maybe think you if go I more miss sideways. it, maybe I'll take my shoes. Maybe I'll take the Tim's off and go barefoot and see if I can't get a soccer style. You're gonna break your fucking toe. I'm gonna break my toe. No, you think I'm I got not gonna toes? put that on you. I do think you have weak toes. Uh, well, they are pretty. They're, they're wore down. You wore steel-toed cleats. <laughs> I did wear it. All righty. Well, if you, too, would like to take on this challenge of uh, potentially kicking a field goal in Timberland Boots, uh, please send us your videos of you kicking in Tim's. We would love to see them. Show Jason how it's done. Dude, I know so many people that have actually messed up their legs kicking. Pat talked about it last week after he got done. He's playing soccer, tore his hip flexor. Connor Barwin, one time he punted a ball after practice. I don't, think his knee, I don't think his knee was ever the same. Yeah, you don't want to get the hyperextension. You want to make sure all those muscles are firing so one doesn't over. I mean, I this is all, I know nothing about this. This is all what my theories are, but God well, damn. I think it, it sounds like it makes sense. And yeah, it's, just don't, it's, don't, don't go too hard. Lightly. Yeah, Don't go too hard. So uh, best of luck to everybody. Um, <laughs> hopefully you uh, stay nice and healthy and we can have some awesome videos of you. Attempted to kick in Tim's. Would love yes. to see that. Tag us on social at New Heights Show with one S with your kicks and Tim's. That's right. Shout out again to our friends at Timberland and Vans. You are obviously huge fans of some butters. Appreciate them supporting this kick and Hurricane Relief Fund. Souls for souls. Let's keep this thing moving. Let's move on to some football. That's right. Bold topics to wrap up. Week 8 in the NFL. Both topics are brought to you by the powerful backing of American Express. Starting with the Chiefs. Chiefs 27, Raiders 20. Chiefs are now 7-0 and for the first time since the 2013 season. Andy oh, Reid is tied for the winningest coach year. in Allegiant Stadium. Chiefs undefeated in Las Vegas. Oh, shit, coaches. Oh, he's wow. tied for the winningest coach in Allegiant Stadium. Yep. Nice. You guys had a new player in the building. d guys, Yep. Yeah, we just got another one. Joined the squad. Yes, sir. One of the many receivers who have been shopped close to this trade deadline for teams hoping to uh, be playoff contenders. How was it? Man, it's awesome, man. Having D Hop in the building, have another vet, a guy that's, I, I, he's such a, I call him swag champs. When you get a vet that into the building and he just, he juices everybody's confidence up. He juices everybody, like the aura and the, and the fun that you have in the building and just going to work. He's just another guy that you can always rely on to show up and put in the work, but enjoy what he's doing and, and try and have some fun with it, man. And he's been awesome uh, stepping up and uh, stepping oh, yeah. into the building. He had two days to get 
you know, Thursday and Friday during practice to get uh, timing with Pat and in the offense and kind of get into the routine of everything with Coach Reed's uh, way of doing things. And man, he's just professional, just a professional guy. He, co- he came in asking questions, trying to get caught up as fast as possible. And sure enough, we get him in the building and and I think the first third down we had, we went right to him, baby. Yeah, right to him. And he's uh, he's right on time, man. Let's go try out this shiny new uh, weapon we got here. Yeah, last Wednesday, for those of you that aren't uh, privy to how this happened, Hopkins was traded to the Chiefs from the Titans for a fifth-round pick uh, that could become a fourth-round pick, but for all intents and purposes, seems pretty cheap for a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. Is there anything else that DeAndre Hopkins needs to be ready for being a member of the Kansas City Chiefs or Chiefs think- Kingdom? I think he's he's such a professional man. He yeah, knows he knows how to win football games. He knows how to be accountable. Um, you don't need to tell that guy much. You know he gets it. He gets it, and uh, and he's only he's only made us better already. And I, I I promise you, as he gets more incorporated into the offense and uh, gets more in tune with Pat and uh, how Pat likes to do things and how he likes to do things for Pat, you know, I think all of that will just make him a very vital part of this offense and. Uh, it's fun. To, it's fun to have him in the building, man. It is, man. It's like I said, he's a swag champ, just the coolest guy, you know, and uh, he definitely juices up the room man. juices up the huddle. Well, we have some uh, postgame comments uh, on Hopkins from some of your teammates. Patrick Mahomes uh, said, as I looked back at the tablet, that's uh, for those of you that don't know, there's an iPad on the side of the games where you can kind of see what's happening. As I look back at the tablet, there's a couple of times where in man to man coverage, he was just really working and winning. Mahomes said of Hopkins, uh, even the touchdown to Travis. If you look back on his side, he's open too for a touchdown. I know the type of player he is. So Pat, obviously big fan of DeAndre D hop. Coach Reed was also quoted as saying he wanted to be in there more, which is positive. He finished with two receptions for 29 yards on three targets. I understand he'll get more chances in the next game. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And obviously, we'll have more uh, more plays in the base game plan that we put in on Wednesdays. We didn't get them in the building until Thursday. So. It's a late addition for the week. It's hard to kind of just, you know, throw yeah. a bunch of plays at them. Yeah, but. exactly. And, uh, yeah, you could well, – re-watching that game, man, he was out there breaking guys off. It's just fun, like I said, to have him, have him in the Still building. Yeah, he's yeah. one yeah, 100%. There's, there's no uh, drop-off with him. At all. Well, speaking of throwing a bunch of things at you, Big Yeti had a big day. That's right. He led all receivers this past Sunday, finishing with 10 receptions for 90 yards and got his first study of the season. How about that? About big Yeti time. back in the end zone. Ah, how's it feel? It felt good to be in the end zone, man. I hadn't felt that end zone in a long time. It was kind of like, oh, shit, what do I do now? You know, it was one of those things. I haven't been in a while. You, you went with the natural spike, natural spike. It's like when you go back home, you're just like, well, now what do I do? Do I go <laughs> see this person first or that person first? Do I go to the high school? Do I go to my favorite restaurant? You know what I mean? You're just kind of right. sitting there like, what should I do? What should I do? So many things. I was lucky uh, my, my guy D-Hop came up and <laughs> saved me because I was just kind of sitting there not doing a goddamn thing. But it was electric to get in the end zone. And anytime we get in the end zone right now, it's uh, you got you to gotta take that momentum and run with it, baby. That was our focus coming into this game was not settling for field goals. Uh, we did on a few drives and uh, and hurt ourselves on a few others backed up. But it's a mentality right now that we're just going to make sure that we give our defense touchdowns. Got to have them. Yeah. When you give uh, Chris Jones and that front and Spags the ability to blitz on, on third downs and really bring the pressure and put teams in passing situations, uh, I mean, that is a tough, tough defense, man. And uh, and we love them for it, man. And I think giving them points early is is only going to make everybody's job a whole lot easier, man. We also got another big Yeti lateral towards the end of the first half, oh, which fuck. my man Piran was not as uh, well. I guess he was ready for it. You guys definitely knew you were doing this one. This one felt more planned out. Yeah, that's why I got I got to just calm down. I got a little excited. I fucking before he was like able to like get ready for the lateral. I felt like guys were closing on me, and I could pitch it to him. He could get out of bounds. It was it was way too, it was it was too much. It was chaos, and I uh, I I told him afterwards, like my bad, dog. I won't put you in a situation like that again. Uh, and he he told me he was like, don't worry, man. I'll be ready for it. But it's still, uh, you know, when the ball's on the ground, when you do something like that, um, all I can all I can like hear and see is just Coach Reed. Just come here. Don't ever fucking do that ever again with my jersey on your back. Don't you ever fucking do that with me. So time out. Is this this one wasn't designed because this one did look designed. Most of the time when you do it, you're doing it out of nowhere on your own. No, if it was designed, he would have. I think he would have been more ready for it. I kind of just fucking threw it on him. 
Fair enough. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Him, the ball hitting the ground kind of. It helped. It did. It did. Like Ironically, it, the, it did help a little bit. It threw the uh, safety off or the corner. The corner, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that is the safety he was playing. He was playing that. Uh, Two invert or whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, if you're going to do dumb shit, don't do real dumb shit. It's golden rule that I grew up with. You know, if you're going to be stupid, don't be real stupid. So there we go. Just got to, you know, contain the stupidity and just just be great. That's Travis Kelseyism. Just be great. Get the ball. Get it north. Um, fortunate that uh, that we got in the field goal range there, and I didn't uh, cough the ball up to the uh, Raiders, man. Maybe the play of the game. The Chiefs are up 17-13 in the third. Raiders have the ball on the three-yard line, and we're denied. That's right. Big-time goal line stand. The Raiders went for it on fourth down. Tershawn Wharton sacks Gardner Minshew for a turnover on downs. Um yeah, was the goal line stand a play of the game? That was at a point one hundred percent. It got me right? fired. It got me fired up, man. I was out there screaming and hollering, and you could hear how many Chiefs fans were in the uh, Allegiant Stadium too, man. Um, that place absolutely erupted uh, when, we, when they got the fourth down stand because we had just had a big turnover and um, backed up turnovers typically end in points, and when you can steal uh, the ball back. Uh, with a team trying to go for it on fourth down, man. It's just electric. You get so much momentum. And I'm pretty sure after that, we uh, we drove the ball all the way down and uh, found a way to at least get some points. Yeah. A 19-play field goal drive. Jesus. Oh, wow. That's a long oh, yeah. drive for just a field goal. Oh, but, yeah. But, but 10 minutes o'clock, you guys freaking really got after it. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything more electric than a goal line stand. It is just like pure adrenaline when that fourth down doesn't work out. Oh, yeah. We also got a great post from Drew Tranquil after the game. <laughs> Drank? Yeah, he wasn't having any of this nonsense. Drew Tranquil said, Kermit and the boys vibing out in Arrowhead West. <laughs> there we go. So Allegiant Stadium is now Arrowhead West, according to Drew Tranquil. Love that. Was the Chiefs defense more fired up than usual to play the Raiders with all of the chatter that was going it, on? I don't in think the it really takes. And leading up to the season? I don't think it really takes chatter for everybody to get fired up for a division rivalry. You know, I think everybody right. knows what's at stake and everybody wants to, you know, rise to the occasion and really make their statement. All the, all the Kermit stuff that happened between the Raiders and them saying that they had the, uh, the formula to stop Pat Mahomes. I think that was just, uh, you know, icing on the cake of motivation to really go out there and, uh, and show them that they didn't have that formula, you know? And uh, we got to go out there and prove it again. We got to prove mm. it again when we play them uh, down the road here after Thanksgiving. And um, I know they'll be ready because we were out there. Uh, we were in a bar fight for for four quarters there. And we we're fortunate enough to to get that goal line stand, milk a lot of the clock, put some more points up on the board, get two score lead. But that team fights, man. Like I said, Coach Pierce, he's he's got those guys flying around. Uh, playing tough football, man. And Max Crosby is a fucking dog, man. He is, uh, <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, I can't get my fucking hands on him. I got to be better in the run <laughs> game against Difficult. him. Difficult. Yeah, and he uh, and he does a great job of just being, you know, wrecking havoc, man. Yeah. And he's he's one of those guys where you talk shit like you hate him during the game, and then yeah. afterwards, it's nothing but love, man. I got so much respect for him and how he carries himself, and 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 how he stands on being the face of that franchise and doesn't you know shy away from uh, shy away from anything. You know he loves he loves the the Raiders organization. You can see that, and he just wants to win, man. Chiefs defense also just added a new weapon. Patriots former linebacker Josh Uchi. Yes, sir. Had 11 and a half sacks in 2022. He's an athlete, man. Sure. He's, he's, he's like typical like Patriots backer that can kind of do a little bit of everything. So those are always good pieces, especially Athletic as hell, man. my man Spags. He, he likes pieces like that. Yep. Guys that you can do all sorts of fun stuff with. That's always fun. <laughs> Trav, uh, you caught up with the Raiders rookie tight end Brock Bowers after the game. Yeah. Uh, do you typically ask for jerseys or were you just getting into the national tight end day? Uh, season, you know, I I always try and you know reach out to the rookies or at least the young guys getting into the league. I think Brock is obviously he's leading all tight ends and in, uh, in I think receptions and catch and receiving yards. Um, I'm not sure about receptions. I know he definitely has the yards right now and uh, 500 plus yards through what is it seven eight games for him as a rookie. I mean that's fucking that's damn good right there. So he's got a lot of promise to be, you know, a, a staple at the tight end position for a long, long time at being his rookie year. And he came into the league so young, only playing uh, three years at Georgia um, and uh, watching him play, man. He's he's got some he's got he's got a smooth game 
You know, he's uh, he's out there running similar routes to what I was kind of running earlier on in my career. And uh, and I just uh, always always want to make sure I look out for the uh, for the young tight ends in the league and let them know uh, they got my support, man. Absolutely. Well, uh, we got some LeBron stats. Travis now has the second longest active streak of games with at least one reception at 165 games behind only. D-hop. His new teammate, DeAndre Hopkins. That's right, yep. with one sixty nine. Yeah. Have you guys talked about this? Do you guys are, are you guys both aware that you're? We're both. We both know that we're. Uh, we were drafted the same year. Obviously, uh, he was drafted to Houston. Um, I was the uh, third rounder to uh, Kansas City, and um, it's just been cool to see how how accountable he's been everywhere, every you know organization, every offense he's been in. He's been the vocal point, and um i just can't wait to see how his uh his role in this offense keeps progressing but now we haven't talked about this and i'm pretty sure i mean i don't give a damn about it yeah i don't think either one of us are thinking about the streaks we just go out there and we just ball <laughs> yeah i mean i think that you just kind of go out there and play right now mahomes became the fastest quarterback to thirty thousand career passing yards and threw his 52nd regular season touchdown to none other than Travis Kelsey. That's right, moving the quarterback tight end duo into third place in NFL history in that category. That's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Rivers and uh, and Gates Antonio have Gates. like a hundred and like nineteen. Yeah, you're never catching like them. Fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> they it's played like f- they played like fifteen, sixteen years together. And Gronk and Brady, they played thirteen years together and had I think a hundred as well with him going down to Tampa and, and having a bunch of tutties there outside of the unbelievable career uh, they had in New England. So, yeah, that's uh, that's probably not going to get touched. So I'll, uh, I'll take bronze medal in that. <laughs> I'll take a bronze medal in that. That's fun. Next week, the Chiefs are at home versus the Bucks on Monday Night Football. Jason, hey, yo. you're in KC again, dog. Can't wait. What's up? Can't you were uh, you were tailgating with the with the the people. You were one with the people, the Chiefs I was. Kingdom, I was. as well as the uh, Saints uh, fan yep. base. True, 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 true. Do, do you have any uh, fun stuff you're uh, getting into yet, or do you not know yet? Um, I don't really know yet. I think we'll find out. I mean, we haven't talked about it too much as a Monday Night Football team. Uh, I'm gonna go out and uh, yeah, we'll see what we get into. I think there's. Listen, I love going to KC, love getting to watch Trav play. So not only do I get to work the first half, but I'll be able to hang out and see a bunch of friends and family and familiar faces in the second half and catch up with you after the game. So it's always fun when I get to come to Kansas City and watch Trav play. Bands of City. Hey, yo. Well, the Bucks are putting up points on offense. So um, they need, are. Uh, need a big week in uh, terms of prep this week so we can get on the same page and make sure that we put up some tutties for our defense, man. But that's enough about the Chiefs. Let's get to the rest of the biggest stories coming out of week eight in the NFL as we uh, start with the Eagles. Hey, Eagles 37, Bengals 17. God that? damn, they put up 37 on the Bengals. Yeah, buddy. Fly, Eagles. Fly. Go, birds, baby. Jason, in- initial thoughts on the game. I thought this was the best game that he was played collectively in a long time. I mean, they were good on both sides of the ball. The defense played well. Offense, probably their most complete game they played, you know, this season, I'd say. Yeah. And the Bengals, I know that their record indicates that they're not very good. Dude, that team They've is been good in team, every man. single on, game. Though. Like, yeah. these guys have been, you know, very close in all of them. So, to be able to come out on top like this against a team that has played pretty much everybody tight in Cincinnati – I thought it was a very impressive game. And I think in particular, Jalen Hurts played his ass off, man. He was on point. He was dialed in. He was making smart decisions. The offense was in rhythm. And that's the big thing. Like, ever since AJ went down before Tampa, it, it's felt like the offense has, has been a little bit, like, not disconnected, but, you know, just very spotty. And, and it hasn't really been able to find that cohesiveness, that that timing, and uh, they had it this past week against the Bengals. So it was fun to watch. Well, despite not scoring in the first quarter yet again, they still put up 37 points. It was close. It was close. They got a field goal like right after the first quarter ended, I believe. But That's still, though, man. That's fuck, That's insane that you don't score for a quarter and you still put up 37 points. <laughs> good, uh, the Eagles do remain the best only second NFL second half team. offense in the NFL, I believe. <laughs> yeah, right now. That's, I mean, that's a good it's half close. to turn it on, baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they remain the only NFL team uh, scoreless in the first quarter, partly due to a Bengals 10-minute uh, opening drive, which is yeah. also – uh that's that's pretty it was tough, an impressive man. opening starting drive. ice cold just waiting for the ball to get back in your hands or get the ball for the first time jalen finished with 200 
36 yards with one touchdown, three rushing TDs. That's right. Uh, That's push pushes and, uh, in there, baby. No interceptions, which is always a big thing. Turnovers will kill you. One of the most electric plays of the game uh, came towards the end of the third quarter, though. Jalen connected with Devontae Smith. Yeah, buddy. That's right. Skinny Batman for a 45-yard TD. And you just got to love it when Skinny Batman comes down with the play because he's he's just a, one of the best teammates you can have, man. You could tell the guy just does no it right, man. He added something to the uh, swear jar at the end of this play. Yeah, buddy. Uh. Yes, you do. Oh, you yeah. do fucking do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You do fucking do this, man. Jar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He lost his chain. <laughs> Looks like it. He, he, he still doesn't give a fuck. You know why he doesn't give a fuck? Because he fucking does this. Yeah. Just call it, baby. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting fucking fired up just watching <laughs> it. Just fired me up right there. Hey. Listen, God. He ain't lying. He does it. He, he does do it. He does it very well, too. Glad to see him back in the end zone yet again. Saquon finished with 108 yards himself, topped 100 scrimmage, scrimmage yards for this sixth time in seven games with the Eagles. The guy's having a fucking unbelievable season, man. Uh, if I got any notes for the Eagles, I'd say get uh, Saquon the ball. Keep giving him the ball? Not bad. The Eagles also scored on five of their second half possessions. Like you said, they're uh, yeah. one of the best teams in the in the NFL in the second half. That and are. that is always a good time to turn it on. Jason, what do you think has caused this offense to suddenly start, you know, having mesh having that click, having that, you know, rhythm and uh and finding uh finding points? You know, I don't know. I mean, they've had a lot of like obviously there've been injuries. AJ and Smitty were out at a certain point, and then I think it just felt like it took a little bit to get that rhythm back. Um, it felt like they got to a little bit more play action this week, and I just felt like, you know, they were on it. Everybody was on it this week, and the timing was there. The cohesiveness was there. Was there. I felt like the plan all went together. It just felt in every phase from, you know, the players to the coaches, everybody was really on one this game, and – you know, that's one of the reasons it's so hard in football is like it only takes a little bit to be off. Even when you got the players that the Eagles have, even when you got the guy like Jalen Hurts back there. Yeah. So hopefully this is something that they can build on. They can build on this uh, confidence, uh, this cohesion, and, uh, you know, keep it moving forward because it's fun to watch, man. When when the Eagles are on, uh, when A.J. Brown is on, uh, it, it, it is a fun offense to watch for dang sure. Damn straight. Well, let's talk a little uh, Eagles defense because holding that high-powered uh, Bengals offense to only 17 points, I mean, that's damn good. So maybe the biggest upgrade since September has been the play of the Eagles secondary. Yes, sir. Burrow was one for two for 13 yards targeting rookie DB uh, Quinyon Mitchell. It's pretty good. Cooper Dijon. Uh, has allowed five receptions in on eight targets for just 25 yards. Since becoming the starting uh, slot cornerback, um, also known as the nickel, in uh, Philadelphia in week six. Both of these rookies have been playing lights out. Uh, Quinion Mitchell has been up to the task against everybody this year. It's really been impressive to watch his ascent as a young player. And then Coop started uh, getting the, the start a couple weeks ago, uh, as you just said, in week six. The defense is just playing more aggressive, and it's a lot of fun to watch right now. They've really had two subpar games uh, when you think about it against the Saints and Tampa Bay and – or not, uh, Atlanta and Tampa Bay. Sorry, they played lights out against the Saints. Um, and Atlanta, it, it, two, for two different reasons. I mean, Atlanta, they just could not stop that outside zone runs to the weak side, and uh, they finally have got that figured out. And then – and Tampa just felt like everything was so off and like, you know, very passive uh, in terms of what they were giving underneath. Now Tampa Bay has some great players. I mean, if Mike Evans, you want to give those guys some cushions, so I get it. But they have answered the bell by being much more aggressive. In particular, there was a great play by Cooper Cooper DeGene on a fourth down um, where Chase was going in motion, and he even said like the moment he kind of saw. Uh, Chase going motion. He had an idea that they were going to try and get him the ball on something quick. And the, sure enough, they tried to throw it out uh, to Chase in the flat, like right yeah. now. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, there's one of those motions where you go back and forth. And, I mean, that's what you, yeah, that's what you do on those Thank kind you. of motions is you try and get the ball quick to him. Yep. Heads up play by the rookie. And uh, right. sorry for saying your last name, Dijon, instead of Dijon. I don't, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, it makes sense. That's how it's spelled. Uh, Jason, you got any <laughs> final thoughts on the game? Is it, is, Are the Eagles... I think they're a new team because they're continuing to get better. Nice. And continuing to evolve as the season's going. Nice. You know, we've known this. We've known that the Eagles have great players. Have they been, like, the best team every single week? No, because this is a, this is a process of getting better each and every week. The defense has shown that. They're being more aggressive in the secondary. The defensive line has really stepped up uh, on offense. Jalen Hurts played his best game of the year, in part because all the weapons are there. The offensive line made him feel really comfortable. Him and the coaches continue to get on the same page, especially with new play caller Kellen Moore. And he just felt comfortable back there. You could tell. Yeah. You know, as long as that continues to trend in that way, you're going to see a great team from Philadelphia because they have the talent. They have great coaches and great scheming. Like, this is a uh, awesome to see. This is what I think everybody expected to see out of Philadelphia going into the season. Yeah, this is the standard. This is the standard. You know, they got a big game this next week in Jacksonville. Well, yes, Doug they P. Do. Ooh, yeah, Dougie P. That's right. The Jags are uh, better than their two and six record. Uh, we all know that. Dougie P can uh, scheme some stuff up pretty damn good, but they also have four of those six losses by uh, less than one score. Yeah, so, they, they're another team that's been close in most of these games. Their record could very easily be different. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a big game this week. Well, we got a few LeBron stats of the game. Jalen Hurts is the first quarterback in NFL history to have three or more games with three-plus rushing touchdowns. Yay! There we go. There we go, Jalen. There we go. Identical twins Chase and Sidney Brown faced off for the first time in the NFL and also made history as the first Canadian identical twins to go head-to-head in the NFL. Nice. 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 That a boy, eh? There we go. Here we go, eh? Huh? The <laughs> hey. twins facing off, eh? Hey. All right, eh? We're excited about another week with our sponsor, MetaQuest, and the MetaQuest 3 Mixed Reality Headset. And as NFL pros ourselves, it only makes sense for us to offer our expert opinion on NFL Pro Era. NFL Pro Era is a VR football game that doesn't just let you take control of your favorite players, but actually gives you their view from inside the helmet. In the game, you can play under center and throw a touchdown to Travis or have me snap you the ball. How about that? All right, now, plus this season in pro era, you're not only running the offense through the eyes of the quarterback, but you're also showcasing your skills on defense by calling plays and uh, filling gaps as a linebacker. That's right, Trav. In the new defense mode in NFL pro era, you can play against the Eagles or Chiefs, so you can feel what it's really like to try to defend the brotherly shove or get trucked by Pat Mahomes in the end zone. NFL pro era has also put a ton of work into recreating Creating every team stadium. That's pretty dope. So it's awesome leading your team through the tunnel onto the field at the start of every game. So if you think you've got what it takes to lead your team to glory, head to meta.com slash quest to check out NFL Pro Era and see everything else that's possible on MetaQuest. Again, that's meta.com slash quest. Check it out. It's time to talk about our friends over at Coke Zero Sugar. That's right. Coke Zero Sugar and EA Sports College Football have an exciting new partnership. When you scan a Coke Zero Sugar product, you can instantly unlock the most coveted in-game currency, College Ultimate Team Packs that can be used in-game. Just go ahead and scan your Coke Zero Sugar, and it will unlock instant win College Ultimate Team Packs that can be used in EA Sports. Trademark, of course, College Football 25. New rewards will drop every few weeks on Coke.com from now through November. So make sure you scan your new Coke Zero Sugar for a chance to win. Also, Coke Zero Sugar's fan work is thirsty work. That's right. National Football Tour is visiting college football and NFL stadiums around the country during the biggest games all season long. They'll have samples, live events, even a friendly EA College Football 25 tournament on game day. Coke Zero Sugar's tailgate tour was just in Columbus at the Nebraska-Ohio State game. Shout out to all the Buckeye fans who made that atmosphere electric. And this weekend, the tailgate tour heads up to UConn as the Huskies take on Georgia State. Swing by if you're in the area, please. Tackle game day with great taste. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? You might have to try and decide for yourself. All right, now let's keep it moving to the Week 8 roundup. We had a bunch of great games and a bunch of big-time matchups. 
Uh, let's get into a few of those uh, and talk about a few before we get to Nisi Nash Betts. Yeah. Uh, and a fun interview uh, talking about some uh, grotesquerie and some Reno 911. Well, Starting with the Monday night football game. Yeah, a little Monday night action. Obviously, you know, I was talking about it last night. I think everybody was talking about it on Twitter. The George Pickens catch or not catch. Dude, insane. Yeah, I think everybody's been very quick to point out he needs both feet down, not just two feet. And I, I got to admit, I had I didn't know what the ruling was. Like, he clearly got two steps down. Yeah. Right? Here it he is for that everybody one, that didn't see it. Gets pushed. And then somehow the left never touches. Yeah. So the right the right foot hits twice. The left one, because he got hit uh, the way he did, uh, never catches the ground, which I'm Solid not going to play lie. by the defender. I mean. Hell of a fucking play. And that's why you finish the play. Even if the guy's got it, got it in his hands, that's why you finish the play like that, man. I said this uh, last night. This is a great point. Go ahead. Yeah, every... Every once in a while, there's a catch made that makes everybody reevaluate what a catch is. Like there's yeah. the Des Bryant one that happened in the playoff game. Oh, there's so many. It, where it's just like, I think to everybody watching, this so much obviously should have been a catch. He catches yeah. it midway in the end zone, and they rule him out of bounds. And I get it. By rule, By it rule. does say both feet. You mm-hmm. need the right and the left. I understand that that is the rule. I just think that there's – See, I go back and forth on this, though, too. Like, by this rule, somebody could catch the ball in the middle of the field and hop on one leg till they get out of bounds, <laughs> and he's out of bounds. Like, no, I mean, come on. Guys, that's, that's not a catch. A catch. <laughs> but yeah. we've seen how much changing. we Every time they add an addendum to any of these rules. Addendum, nice. Every time they add, like, this little, like, oh, it's then this or then this, it feels like it becomes harder in some ways to gauge what it catches. Yeah. So maybe we shouldn't change it. We just know that like that, that like, everyone knows that's a catch, just not by the NFL rules. Yeah. Like, like, no, that was played by catch. George Pickens. Yeah. And I feel like there's, sh- in some ways, I feel like they should add an addendum and say, like, hey, if you hop twice on the same leg, like, clearly two you- separate steps, that should be in bounds. But there at the same time. There should be a good judgment clause. And there should be somebody in New York saying, yes, that was that I override that. That was a touchdown. I know the rules might not say it, but we just don't have enough leeway to like create rules for every single like situation. It's just like or maybe they change. Maybe they change this and they put it in there. Like if you if you if you hop twice and have a football play or have the possession and that counts as two feet, like one foot and an elbow, one foot and a knee. You know, the, all these other, th- but I guess two feet of the same foot is not a catch. I mean, the problem is if they change it, it just leads to like more discrepancy. Like there's going to be one where like a guy is going to like step and then toe drag the same foot. And then people are going to be like, that's two feet. And it's like, dude, this was like two very distinct steps. He caught it five yards inbounds when he first like got it on his hands. Yeah. So. That's the problem God with changing. Damn, it's but tough. It's tough. To me, I I mean, I don't know how you can be out of bounds the way <laughs> it like, was a mind blowing play. I remember seeing it just watching. When they like, first said like his I've left never foot never touched, like I was like, What? How is that possible with where he yeah. caught it at? And then yeah. it's like, oh, okay. But I guess the easy way to say it is like, hey, you know, drag your foot. I don't know. Yeah. I hear Straighten you. that left foot out. Don't but even put it way, in the ref's hands. Yeah. Either way, hell of a play. By George Pickens. And a hell of a play by the DB. Yeah, that's right. That's right. National tight end day, or Woo! as I like to call it, uh, Sunday. Travis, uh, tight ends <laughs> across the league celebrated Travis, <laughs> Travis's favorite <laughs> holiday uh, by nice. setting all sorts of records. That's right. There were 16 total touchdowns, the most tight end touchdowns ever on National Tight Ends Day. This is why it was National Tight Ends Day. I mean, that's a brilliant idea by tight ends. Hey, let's create a National Tight End so all our coaches scheme up touchdown plays for the tight ends. Shout out to George brilliant. Kittle, man. Brilliant. That's George Kittle thing right there. He, he came up with that one. It was brilliant. There was also 177 total catches on National Tight End Day, the most ever on National Tight End Day. Some highlights, uh, I think everybody saw uh, 49ers. George Kittle had a huge touchdown play. <laughs> George he was rolling. A he had a big. He had, he had a nice day. Six catches Cowboys, for one twenty-eight. Kyle Shanahan was another definitely, tutty man. Kyle Shanahan was definitely uh, celebrating National Tight End Day. Bucks tight end Kate Otten. That's right. With uh, Kate. 
But they're Kane's two had, big receivers. He's a sneaky, solid year this year, man. That's right. With uh, Godwin two receivers and Evans down. Out. Yeah. He's becoming the old reliable with no gloves, baby. Two tutties. Dude, but, I hate. I do. I don't know why. I don't like when guys don't wear gloves. It's just not like I have like listen to each your own, but it's just like why would you put yourself at a disadvantage? I don't understand. Like it's so much better wearing gloves. So why do you not wear gloves? Like what are you proving? Whatever floats your boat finds the lost remote, baby. Is it just to be like I'm tough? Like there's no way you're better at catching without gloves. I don't think Cade's trying to prove something like he's tough. I think he just, I just think he doesn't like gloves. I maybe that it's makes too no sticky. sense to me. It maybe is like so sticky. much easier to catch in gloves. Maybe it's not for him. There's no chance. I'm not buying it. Like when I see D tackle, like Vita Vea would never wear gloves. I'm like, do you just love fucking your fingers up? Just put some gloves on, man. You're going to be, it's going to feel way better. What's fucking his fingers up? Have you ever not worn a glove and tried to block? My yeah. right hand, I couldn't wear a glove on because I need to snap the ball. Yeah. Right. And I could not snap with a glove on. I hate, I wanted so bad to put a glove on this hand because it would always get cut up. It would always get bloodied. It would get bruised. And I just couldn't grab as good. Like the materials on hand that they so make you, the gloves so with. So you couldn't grab as good with the glove on, but K Dot and no, I can. Use gloves no, that's what I mean. It. I can grab as good with the glove, but because I wasn't allowed to wear it, I didn't get that mechanical advantage. Wait, why weren't you allowed to wear it? Well, I was allowed to, but I couldn't snap the ball with it. It, it like stuck to the ball too much. Uh, it so it is too, too sticky in times. Yeah, it's great for catching, not for throwing sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Well, I will I mean, agree with that. Quarterbacks use it all the time. Peyton Manning was a, he's a Hall of and Fame they, quarterback. He yeah, used they to use throw it. The ball. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do it with uh, with the snapping, but uh, this has nothing to do. <laughs> there is absolutely <laughs> nobody who cannot catch a ball better with those rubber, basically stick them gloves on. Like, I don't believe Some that guys one bit. just got good sticky hands, man. No, you don't I, see Cade I, out here dropping the ball. Guy had, had guy had nine catches. I don't want to make this about Cade. I just think it's dumb when people don't take advantage of all of the what, are you modern call day out Dallas Clark advantages for, to be for better. the legendary career he had. Dallas Clark was a phenomenal receiver, and he would have been 10 times better tight end. if he tight could catch. Phenomenal well, tight, tight end. end, whatever. I was saying, sorry. He would have been 10 times better if he could have had gloves on. Yeah, he would have been catching it like. <laughs> 10 times better. He would have been like Odell Beckham. If he's catching the ball like that with no gloves, he would have been like. <laughs> You're he, crazy. He would have been out there plucking apples. <laughs> You're crazy, dude. Dude, I'm not buying this. It is uh, stupid not to wear gloves. It's not. Do tight ends just spend all week begging OCs for touches? No, I had, I haven't talked to uh, my offensive coordinator about touches just gotta, for this tight end, national tight end day. You should just find like a different holiday or birthday or Every anything. Week. Tom, you know it's my birthday. You know it's National 87 Day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just ever see. Did you know it's National I Shaved My Mustache Day? <laughs> Did you know it's National Hairy Chest Day? <laughs> Just keep coming up with them every Just single week. Keep coming up with them. Just every, yeah. <laughs> Washington, hail Mary. Let's get into a few other games, man. Maybe the play of the year so far. The Commanders went down 15 to 12. Uh, two seconds left on the clock. Jaden Daniels. Uh, scrambles around for a little bit and then just absolutely heaves a 66 yard pass. And when I say he threw that thing from about the 35 yard line, he threw it from about the, the, his own 35 yard line. It was absolutely electric. Um, it counted as a 52 yard Hail Mary, but let's, uh, see this pass to Noah Brown. Yep. Create, create, let, let everybody get down there. Let everybody get down there. Nice. Move around. O line's doing a great job. Shout out to Nikki Allegretti, Andrew Wiley. Um and then the the heave the heave yeah. you got to have a tip man you got to have the tip man and then the guy Noah in the Brown front and the guy right in the back for it. is perfectly executed by the uh by the gang over there Kingsbury does a great job of making sure his guys know what to do in a situation like that and uh you got great players making making big time plays towards the end I mean uh, the Bears thought they had that thing finished yeah they uh they That's went up 15, 15 12 with uh with a few seconds left and somehow they got into range to 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 throw a fucking hail mary man somehow well i mean the first play the first play That's is what i'm like, saying they you know somehow about it they were playing 50 yards off playing hail mary on the play before like what are yeah, you doing yeah yeah that's that's tough we got to like we gotta, you got to know bro when they're on the 30 yard line they're not throwing a hail mary they're, if they're going to do anything they're going to run like a gadget play to try and like it's either sideline or you're running like the the last play that you have which is like a a bunch of laterals, right? Like nobody's throwing the Hail Mary from the 30. Maybe. I mean, you can, but don't usually happen. Right. So it was surprising. I mean, they 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 basically gave them 15 free yards. 
yeah, to where now they are in Hail Mary territory. That's tough. They got guys talking trash. I felt, I mean, Stevenson owned it, but. Um, yeah, this one sucks, man. You got fans pointing at the, uh, at the play, telling them that the, there's a play going on while he's, he's taunting them. It got snapped. This is tough, man. This is tough. You, uh, you don't really want to be doing that before the game's over with, let alone while there, while there could be a play being ran, but obviously it's, uh, it's magnified because he's the one that tipped the ball. Fuck! Not only did he tip it, but... And, Trav, I'll, I'll ask you this, because you are the jumper on the Chiefs' defensive Hail Mary. Not, not all the time, but, yeah, there is, a, there is a situation where I've gone back there, yeah, for sure. Not only was he celebrating, which, I mean, I, 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 that alone, I feel like... And he's already yeah. announced that he, that he fucked up. He knows he yeah. fucked up. yeah. But then he also, when he jumped, he like swats up at the ball. I'm like, you're not supposed to do that either. No. Like everybody knows, like do not hit that ball up. You, you kind of want to stay behind. I know it's the harder. Trajectory. We're it's acting very like it's hard. easier and, said and everybody's, than yeah, this You're is. trying to high point it. You're trying to get it deflected so it's not just like a straight catch. Yeah. Um, but you really want to spike that thing down. You want a volleyball hit that Correct. thing down. Two hands spike down is like the big, because you get more surface area on the hand to hit it. Um, get more control of it. Um, and I like to stay behind the ball and come at it. Right. So you see how he's coming down the line of scrimmage yeah, or he was down coming the goal line? Because he was kind of late to it. He wasn't even supposed to be well, the jumper. He was supposed to be the guy in the I mean, back. everybody's everybody's got to try and make a play on the ball if they can. For sure. Yeah, I'm not you, saying that. You don't know. You, I, don't, I don't know what their defensive rules were on this. Somebody no, they was said definitely he, supposed to be. They, they came out and said he was supposed to be on Noah Brown. That's he was tough. supposed to be on the guy in the back. But either way, like you said, even the guy in the back can make a play on the ball if he, if he has the opportunity, right? Like, everybody's got free reign for that. you got to have somebody on there. You ain't supposed to tip it up. Yeah. I like to stay behind it. I like to stay behind the ball and be able to run forward at it. That way I can uh, meet the the angle better. Yeah, try and knock it down. Yeah. Either way, though, you gotta you got to try and – deflect that thing down by if if possible by all means and he just he couldn't get a good uh good hit on it man and uh it's just a bunch of a, a bunch of stuff that just sucks man because he's he's taking a lot quite of heat, the heat right now yeah right and um and you know he did the right thing by trying to yeah he owned up let to everybody it. I mean, know that's all yeah. you can do and i think coach Iberfus is a great coach i played against him when he was in uh dallas a lot and he used to give me – him and Sean Lee and some of the backers they had, and I think he's a fantastic coach. I don't even – this shouldn't have even been – this shouldn't have ever happened. I think if, if you if you make the right call in the first one and you play sideline, and I just don't think you get into this situation to begin with. Yeah, moving on, though, let's talk a little Browns football, baby, a little Believeland up there in the – Lake Erie, baby. Hey, yo. Jameis leads Browns in an upset victory. Jameis Winston made his first start since 2002 and led the Browns to an incredible comeback win. Why do you think Jameis was able to come in and uh, and cook when the Browns had looked so bad on offense? Well, uh, well, first of all, they had a new play caller. Uh, Ken Dorsey was calling plays in this game. But I think also, like... Jameis came in and was Jameis. He had a bunch of turnover worthy plays and he had a bunch of highlight throws. Like this is who Jameis has been his whole career. Like at times Jameis can make magic happen. This is true. Come like, on. This now. dude has some, every game he plays, it's going to be an electric play, either good or bad. <laughs> and it is going to be the best soundbite of all time after the game. And he's never changed. And he still isn't changing. He knows a white boy from Detroit and, like, bro, this was the quintessential Jameis game. He played great. He had a lot of unbelievable plays. He also had a couple plays that probably could have been turnovers that got dropped. Like, he's going to put points up. He's going to find a way to put points on the board. It might be – it's going to be a high-scoring game when Jameis is involved for both teams usually. <laughs> I'm not um, trying well, to be – like, I love – dude, I absolutely love watching I, You play. already know. We, we, we're we big fans of uh, Jay Winston, man. Yeah. Uh, most importantly, we uh, we got some more iconic uh, quotes from Jameis, like you just <laughs> mentioned, the, the guy up and uh, the white boy from Detroit. Um, I love that he then followed it up with named Eminem. Like, everybody knows when you said you know a white boy in Detroit – who you're referencing? There's a white boy from Detroit that I really admired named Eminem. He said, "You uh, you only get one shot. 
Do not miss your chance to blow. This is the opportunity lasts once in a lifetime. I mean, <laughs> it's great. That was one. That was his quote after the game. Before the game, though, he's in the huddle trying to get everyone fired up and ready for the game. And he says, every one of us has an... Oh, here we go. Once in a lifetime. <laughs> and with those opportunities, we have to make the most of it. Every one of us have an individual responsibility to go out there and fight for each other. Represent the names on your back. Represents the names that's on your helmet. Well, we don't got no big cap. <laughs> so represent the names. All right, one play at a time. All right, together. <laughs> He's so, so good. good. He's genuinely himself, man. Well, you that's why love it's it. good. Because so many yeah. times when people are doing either the sound bites after the game or the motivational speeches, they're just latching on to like cliches, and it ends up being like nothing exciting, and everybody's just sitting there like. Oh my gosh, will you shut up so we can go in there and freaking get dressed for this freaking game already? <laughs> if you got the right one doing it, though. For sure. And Jameis is the right one. I would be as close to possible every time he's doing it. Because I'm like, I want to hear what this dude's about to say. Because it is going to be electric and fucking hilarious. I need to hear exactly <laughs> what this dude's about to say at all times. Coach, quote of the week. Sean Payton had a brutally honest quote uh, about the Panthers. In quotes, that's not a good offense we played. <laughs> it's just the truth. We expected that. We're going to see a lot better teams. Well, um, I mean, hey. I mean, Sean Payton has always <laughs> kept it. He's always Sean Payton don't give mind. a fuck anymore. He's, He's always like, spoke his mind. Yeah, he, uh, he, he had quite the words to say about uh, Nathaniel Hatchett, I think his name was. He kind of walked that one back. He knew he kind of went a little bit too hard. He walked it back a little bit last year. but Because he... Everybody heat. was um, giving him shit for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he still spoke his mind. Panthers cornerback uh, J.C. Horn also confronted Sean Payton after the game, letting him know they didn't appreciate Denver running up the score. Interesting. The Broncos Come ran on. a fake field goal and a trick play on fourth and two while up 20s. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking hilarious is what that is. <laughs> That's fucked. What does he have against the Panthers? <laughs> Who knows? It's just working on plays, I guess. I don't know. Just got to get it on film. Keep everybody yeah. honest hey, on, we're on special right teams. Now. We're building confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, man. Yeah. All right. Dude, listen, <laughs> pretty shitty, but at the same time, like, dude, this is the NFL. I don't want to hear nobody getting salty about running yeah, up the score. This is, man. It's the NFL. When brother. you're getting paid to do this, you don't got no right to be complaining about that. I hear you on that, man. You just got to step up, man. Stop the yeah. fake. Why are you guys trying? Uh, we're literally, it's our job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that does it for our week eight bold topics brought to you by the powerful backing of American Express. Let's talk a little Jason out of the house. Hey. Alrighty, out of the house. Moving on. Let's get out of the house and talk a little Monday night football. Hey out of the house is brought to you by Coke Zero Sugar. Tackle game day with the irresistible taste of Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? <laughs> I want to try it and decide for yourself. Yeah, why don't you tell us? All righty. Jason got out of the house yet again. Man, you keep doing this every Monday, don't you? It's my job. Yes, sir. I have to leave the house. In uh, three obligated. rivers. The three rivers. Yes. How about yeah. that, man? You were down on the uh, on the rivers hanging we out. on the water. From, yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. The fans made it fun. Steelers, I mean, dude, they were into it. Scott Van Pelt pointed out to me something like every team wears their jerseys to games, but in particular, like Steelers, it is like everybody. Nobody is in that stadium that's a Steelers fan without a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey. It's crazy, man. Yeah. It's like, it's like that is the place you it's wear jerseys. It's a sea of black and yellow. Yeah, it's a crazy place to play in. That's for damn sure. And we get to go out there in Christmas uh, while everybody's all fired up, getting presents and shit. Uh, Jason, you were waving around the terrible towel, though. I don't know how the Birds fans uh, appreciated this, but hey, man, this is a gift from my man, Worldwide West. Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. I forgot you were you're on like a world tour, getting gifts from everybody. This is cool. That's right. I'm getting I'm getting all sorts of good gifts, knickknacks. This this towel in particular has been to 17 different stadiums. West said, nice. Dude, I didn't, how about that? He's been taking it everywhere. He said if you drop it, the rule is you got to kiss it. Rules are rules. Since this thing's been to 17 stadiums, I'm going to try Never to Never washed? Avoid. It's got some fade to it, but I don't know if that's a sun 
fade or if that's faded from Dry, getting washed. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Can't tell you. Very interesting. Uh, experience any cool Steelers uh, fan traditions? The boat stuff is a, is pretty dope. There was a guy that was like a flying uh, Troy Palomalu is what he said. They get on these like boards <laughs> oh, yeah, and they that, go out those, there. Yeah, that's yeah sweet. they got that. Um, the terrible towel tradition and like some of the lore behind that and having to kiss it if you drop it, I think it's pretty cool. Outside of that, we got to hang out with the Coast Guard. Got to sit in front of a 50 cal gun on the front Ooh. of those things, which I might do. You want to like I was like, man, this thing, this thing can do some damage here, dude. I don't. I know you guys aren't doing any damage, but it's good to know that these guys got these things in case we need those things. You ever shot one of those things? What they had on it? Yeah, a fifty cal machine gun. No, I have not shot a fifty cal. You machine You haven't done gun. that. You need to. When have you you done it at? Uh, Nevada, Viva Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> Where you can do right. fucking anything. And uh, I got on the top of an old jeep. And they had some bowling pins sitting like about a fucking quarter mile, half a mile down there. And I just, just, oh my fucking God, this is amazing. (laughs) It was electric, dude. I loved every sound. I'd do it again. We need to get this shit done. Jason, you were in a Peaky Blinders outfit. I don't know that this is necessarily you peaky. Like, I'm telling you, dude, you pop up on that screen. Nobody knows what the fuck you're about to show up looking like. <laughs> and it's impressive to me. I mean, I you don't always, it. you know, pull off the dapper look like this, man. You got your your old Englishman hat and that corduroy jacket, man. You look, I mean, that thing is sweet, dude. The looking corduroy like a smooth suit was operator nice. up there, dude. The corduroy suit was real nice. And the last game we were at in Buffalo, it was windy. And I was like, dude, I got to have something thicker. I got to have some thicker yeah. material. We're out there here. You go. In the, a smoker's jacket at or night yeah. in, in fall. So the corduroy definitely was way warmer. And then yeah. the hat just kept the heat in nice. Nice. Well, we can't uh, pass by uh, you rocking the old uh, 2 5. That's right. Ryan Clark's old jersey. That's right. Down by the yeah, water, baby. man. Showing some love to a uh, legendary Steeler. Um, and uh, your, uh, what, what would you what would you call him? Your your new teammate. My 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 desk mate. Your desk mate. Nice. I like your, de- you know, your new desk mate. Well, yeah. I guess it isn't new anymore. It's week eight. <laughs> ESPN uh tweeted out uh in quotes, some people would say you are a snack, especially in that outfit. I guess that's what uh SVP said. Well, that's what this There's woman a- was wearing. Oh, is that oh nice. I'm just here for Jason Kelsey and snacks. Oh, nice. And he was and mentioning then he how followed it up with some nice. people would say you are a snack, yeah. especially in that outfit. Yeah, you are, you dapper son of a buck. And then somebody else, I think it might have been Scott or maybe it was Marcus, said, good thing Kylie's not here. (laughs) I mean, everybody's just showing love. Showing love to Jake Kels up there, man. Well, it was fun. Pittsburgh was awesome. The fans were into it. The terrible tile was electric, waving that thing around and seeing everybody else wave it around. It's like a a call and response. Pretty dope. The Yinzers. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just kind of accumulating knickknacks. I respect it, man. You get all those, uh, all those trinkets. I got my, my chicken wing necklace. That's a that's a Mama Kelsey move right there. That is a Mama dude. Every time she would go on a convention, she would come back with a million pens. Just a whole, just a bag of shit. <laughs> yeah, just slinkies and fucking bouncy balls and fucking light up <laughs> pens and fucking dude, you name it, dude. We used to yes. be like, God damn, is this Christmas? <laughs> all these little stocking stuffers, Mama. That's just so the best. Good. All right, and that does it for Out of the House, brought to you by Coke Zero Sugar. Can you feel it? The NFL season is in full swing, and that's why we need to tell you about our special hookup from today's sponsor, SeatGeek, who are back for their third season with new heights. And we have a special discount for the 92 percenters yet again. Get 15% off any tickets on SeatGeek, whether you're a new customer or not, with the code KELSEY2000. 24. That works for sports, concerts, comedy shows, going to see Travis play, you name it. You can get every ticket and experience a Monday night game in person like I do most weeks. SeatGeek rates on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for those green dots. Green means good. Red, not so good. So save yourself some money. Open the SeatGeek app and add code KELSEY2024 to your account to get you 15% off your next order. doesn't matter if you've used SeatGeek before or not. That's code KELSEY2024 for 15% off. Terms apply. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Just like you know to check if you packed your headphones before you get on the plane to Vegas for an away game. Or like, you know, uh, to check if you put gas in the car before you head out on a family road trip with three kids and two Irish wolfhounds. Checking first is smart. 
So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. Uh, you're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. All right, it's time now to talk about this next partner we're excited about, and that's American Express. You've heard us talk about how much we both love getting out of the house to try new restaurants whenever we can. Jason, you were out of the house in Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and uh, Bristol lately. Did you get any uh, new dishes? I did. I actually got a nice uh, Reuben with some fries and coleslaw on it. It's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Well, if you enjoy trying new foods and restaurants as much as we do, we've got some great news, 92% is with Amex Platinum. Uh, you can enroll to get access to global dining access by Resi. Oh, how about that? This allows you to experience many of the most highly regarded restaurants and exclusive access to reservations, as well as getting notified when those hard to get reservations finally open up. That's the powerful backing of American Express, ladies and gentlemen, for terms. And uh, to learn more, visit AmericanExpress.com slash with Amex. Again, that's AmericanExpress.com slash with Amex. All right, now it's officially time to bring on our guest. That's right. We are not professional at all. So we're just going to have a fun convo yeah, with we're you, not all right? We want to make sure that you knew ahead of time that this is uh, this is amateur hour over here. Um, okay, let's get into it. So, so very similar to my acting ability. But all right, here we go. Can I just say something? Please. Of course. Travis, I'm so glad that you texted me and told me you had a new phone number because I've been texting your number, trying to <laughs> just gassing you up, telling no. you you did so good. Uh -oh. I was at, I was Stop asking it. you like, what did your teammates, what your what your people say? Like, you know, how you oh, feeling I'm, about it? I'm did getting... you watch it? And you know <laughs> yeah. what I got? Crickets. Crickets? <laughs> no. I said I know you ain't got brand new. <laughs> oh no, not me, not me. And I did I, have to I switch said, it up though. I, did you see how I shook my neck around when I said it? Because that's what I meant. I know you didn't get crazy. <laughs> not me. Not me. You know me better than that. It was getting crazy. It was getting crazy. I was finally in a show with someone as, as amazing as you. I had everybody hitting me up, blowing me up. I had to switch it up on them, man. No, I, uh, I'm i sorry about that. You already know. And I'll tell you what. I I, I got clowned once I, uh, once I started talking about that banana hammock. Uh, in, uh, ah. <laughs> hey. oh, yeah, so this is what I've that's been Big Peter, you, you, Big Peter, and the banana splitter. That's my favorite. It. That's my what favorite line. What do your teammates think of it? They're very interested in the dynamic on the show. Like, they're everybody's kind of like mind blown on like what's really going on during the show. So that is kind of like taking like everybody's mind away from me as an actor they're just they're in they're involved they're in, engulfed like, in the story yeah, they're engulfed in the story yeah. now the so plot. it's like that's how you uh, know it's good yeah exactly and then uh and then during the uh the character switch up uh the look is where i started getting clown there was the, ah, <laughs> it's just started, that mullet, yeah. the, that mullet, mullet the, <laughs> the mullet suited me in the show but does not suit me outside of it so i know chris funny. jones has told has said something about this show i know chris jones you know what chris hasn't chris hasn't hasn't came up to me yet no i'm uh Stone i hope Cold? he does though i hope he does because <laughs> nine five is hilarious man he's one of a kind I love it. I love it. I just want to say, I thought you did such a good job. I appreciate that, Nisi. I hope you're not one of those people who are afraid to watch yourself because I want you to be proud of yourself. I really do. I was definitely watching myself, but it's the same thing with like my, my view on football or really anything that I do, even like the TV, sh the, the game show that I did on uh, Amazon. It's, I look at myself and I'm like, man, I could have did that better. I yeah. could have did this better. I could have did this better. And I just yeah. always have this mentality of like wanting to do things better than what I, I did on camera or what I've done in the past. And, um, but that's so I how just, you grow. That's how yeah. you grow. We all you know do it. that. We yeah. all look at it and say, oh, I should have made a different choice. So then the next time you get on camera, you're, you're going to remember that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that, that was a question I wanted to ask you. When we watch ourselves on tape, I feel like every great football player kind of hates the way they play football. I, They're I always trying it. to get better. Is it similar <laughs> when like actresses or actors are like watching themselves on tape? Are they like, oh, I wish I would have done that? Yeah, it's it's similar. You're well, saying? you know, some people do not watch themselves. Really? They absolutely at our place where they're like, I can't. Okay. I don't want to watch it. I walk away from it when it's done and I don't think about it. Not me. If I could watch every take back in the moment, I would because mm. I like to course correct and self adjust in Man. the moment. So what I do 
is I try to give different, slightly different reads every time so that um, they have something to work with in the edit. Right. You're so good at that. I remember the first scene we had, I was just sticking to the script. I was on, I was like word for word trying to just stick to the script. I wasn't trying to waste anybody's time. And you, you light, you lighten the mood. You made it so comfortable as a professional. And I did see that you were, you were looking at the, the takes and like, you could see like you were processing how you were doing things. And it was so cool to see your professionalism and everything on set. But before we get to any more questions, we got to get the intro, Jason. Yeah, I know. Well, we were having oh, such a good conversation. We, we got to get the oh. intro. What's we, the yeah. intro? What, what do we got to well, do? I'm going to knock it out. It's, we're going to go right back to what we were doing, but I'm going to do this intro real quick just to uh, hype, hype this up a little bit. All right. From Cal what? State University, Woo! she's a daytime and primetime Emmy award-winning actress. Yes. You know her from her work in Reno 911, Get It On, Claws, Dahmer, and of course, alongside Travis and Grotesque at E. She is also <laughs> our first non-relative female guest. Yes, that's right. That is Please right. Please welcome the wonderful Miss Niecy Nash. Miss Niecy Ooh, Nash yeah. Betts in the house. I should say I Mrs. Niecy that. Nash Betts. But. I love that. And I love that I'm the first woman who's a non-relative. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had to get a real that. one. We were waiting for a real one to, to come available. We appreciate you jumping on with us. You already know we had so much fun shooting uh, grotesquerie. And it was definitely, it was something that I was so blown away by in terms of, we kind of mentioned it already, but your professionalism and just how you made set fun doing the TikToks, yeah. making everybody feel like they were a part of the team. You made it a team atmosphere. And that's that's where I really started to feel comfortable in doing everything. And I uh, I can't thank you enough for uh, for everything you've shown me and uh, making everything oh, so much you. fun. Well, you, you know, know, the thing of it, the thing of it is, is that the show is so dark. <laughs> so I wanted yeah. to make sure that in the in-betweens, like we sitting around looking at dead bodies all day, or, you know, <laughs> and, and blood is on the ground. And you know what I mean? We in the hospital set all day. I wanted to make sure that I kept the crew up. Oh, yeah. You know, so that we can still did. have fun at work. You know, a lot yep. of people go to work and do not have fun. And mm. I'm like, no, I want everybody to feel like we're having a good time. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely did that. That's for sure. Well, speaking of uh, everybody on set, everyone wants to know what it was like working next to uh, the diva that is Travis Kelsey. <laughs> How much did you have to hold his hand? He did fantastic. He really looks great. But I know that just like in football, it's only as good as the people around you and the supporting cast Ain't and that the, truth. The, the other people that you're on set with. So, yeah, what was it like working with the Trav man on an acting set? I'm going to say this. I've said this <laughs> behind your back. I love for you're prefacing this already. <laughs> so I'm going to say it to your face. Uh -huh. I have, listen, you are probably the nicest and the greediest person I've ever met in my life. Wow. <laughs> you are so, so, you are so greedy. And, 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 and you bougie greedy. Oh, oh my god. Have you ever met anybody that was bougie greedy? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, right here. This, this man right here. Because, I like nice things. Okay, so here's the thing. It's one thing to be like, oh hey, and I seen you do this. Have yeah, somebody run out and give me a couple of burgers and you know, okay. But then somebody, I'm like, what's that you eating now? My chef prepared for me. <laughs> I'm like, what? And every time I anytime he was not filming, he was eating. I told Travis, I said, hey, we got this scene. They're gonna put food out. You know, maybe you don't want to eat a lot because whatever you do in the first take, you gotta keep it up all day. He's uh -huh. like, but them meatballs look good. I'm like, right? But maybe. And now you 15 and 20 meatballs in. I'm like, now how you feel? <laughs> uh, like I need some more caffeine. Yes. So good. Uh, you are too funny for that. Oh, that is great. Uh, I, was a, I, was over, I was just trying to make sure I was, you know, eating dietary. You know, I had my diet. I had my nutrition stuff that I had to do in the off season. I'm making up a whole bunch of shit. Shout, I just shout wanted out to go to ahead. Kumar. Shout out I was to just Kumar. hungry. Yeah, you already know <laughs> Chef Koo in the house, baby. <laughs> Looking it up out there in, uh, in California, man. That is too funny. That's so funny you picked up on that. No, but he was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to have on set. And and I love that he didn't take himself too seriously. I even had our crew, 
give him different things that he could do for uh when you do a field time. What is it when you make the point? You catch oh yeah, the, the ball. touchdown. Oh yeah, the touchdown. touchdown. Yeah, the TikTok. You <laughs> already and know. I had, I'm going and I field had, time. I, now on. Field time. Yeah, field uh, time. But I, but, but I don't know sports that much, but. I had people give him different ideas for dances he could do. Oh, yeah. I still got to hit a few of those. I, I haven't been in the end zone enough this year to hit them, but. He got in this week. You know, your favorite one was the little Kim. The little Kim. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> you killed that one. I still got to hit it. You already yeah. know it's coming up. Next touchdown I get, I, I'm hitting that one. Is there okay. like a, is there like an etiquette when you're on set with somebody that like, Actors and actresses know. Did you have to really help him acclimate to like this world? Does that make sense? Yes, I do. Um, and one thing that I would say is like sometimes when you don't know everybody or you're new to a set, you kind of are unto yourself. He got the you know the folk he come with, and it's like, no, come over here, talk to, come on, the water's fine. Yeah, <laughs> but we're gonna run the words, and you know what I wanted to also try to help you do Trav was to trust your gift like you're naturally charming you got a little swag about yourself (laughs) use all of those things and don't be married to the words yeah because we had the luxury of this of kind of moving the words around a little bit a little bit so how they may feel better in your mouth you can kind of switch them up a little bit and I love that you know he just leaned right in he was yeah. like, okay, got it. Let me yeah. try this. Let me try that. You know, and well, you definitely I just made think me feel it turned out great. Right. Yeah. I appreciate oh, that. Thank you. And the show really is so much fun. It really is so cool to like watch. It could be a part of something like that and see it kind of like just the, the final edits and it finally hit the TV. It is so cool to be a part of it. And I can't thank you and obviously Ryan and uh, Courtney B and everybody involved. That shit was so much fun. Do you know when we had the, um, when we had the premiere, so, Mama Kelsey came. Uh-huh. She was cute. She was cute as a butt. Had a little outfit on. I'm like, okay, girl. And so I was, I was able. I was able to talk to her at the after party. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you, she could not have been prouder of you. Uh, you know what I mean? And I'm a mom of three. And, you know, sometimes you clap for your kids because you have to. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. baby. Look, look at her. <laughs> and then sometimes you like, no. Yeah. The whole, it, what I like was watching your mama watch the audience. Uh, no, because when everything. people were going up in the theater, she was looking around like, that's my baby. Hey, <laughs> you know, hey it was nice. It was make nice. It, making mama, mama Kels proud is always one of my favorite things to do. That's, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. you sharing that. Yeah. If if some of this was your guys' freedom of expression, was it Travis's choice to have the mullet with Ed Lachlan? What was that look about? <laughs> <laughs> we had to switch it up, man. Your Rico Suave one second, and then you look like you crawled out of a swamp in the next set. I, was like, I loved it so much. <laughs> and, because all of the characters had a duality that we played, because part right. of it is in Lois's coma state, how she saw people. And then you got the real life mm-hmm. when she wakes up. Yeah, but we still don't even know. Th- there might be another state. Nisi, I don't know what's happening in this show right now. <laughs> I am so confused. I cannot wait for the finale. That's so good. Let me help you. I'll give you a little bit. Can I give you my theory? Go, do it. Let's let's hear this. My theory, and I this is my first thought was, this gives me... This it feels like we're in like a mental hospital. That was my first thought when I saw the show. Then I'm like, okay, but, but okay, now now Lois is in the coma. Maybe and then she's and then that got revealed. And that came out of no, I didn't know you would be in a coma too. There was a lot of signs though. Reddit was all over the place saying she's in a coma like so you're, you so you're just reading this? comments. This guy I did, I did. But but the first one though, I was like, this feels like for some reason it felt like it was in a mental hospital. Now I'm back into that. I feel like Lois and some of these characters are in some type of institution. I don't really know what's happening, but that's kind of my theory. So it's not fully put together. Oh my God, Jason. Can I tell you right now? (laughs) You are so wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. Trav has been telling me I'm way off the whole time. (laughs) I've been trying to tell this guy. He hasn't have a fucking clue. (laughs) 
All right. He's just All so right. stubborn well, in his ways. He's just like, oh, I know, I know. I was no, like, maybe, just... maybe, maybe Lois and Merritt are the same person. Yeah. And Ooh. maybe I'm like trying. Like, I don't know. I oh, can't. you reaching? Oh, you reaching? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. He's in his own head. Yeah. Pump the brakes, bro. All right. I will pump the brakes. Okay. You you said you could help me. Help me out. Help me out. Okay, so the beginning of the series, Lois is in a coma. By the time, and this is everything that's happening in her mind. By the time you get to episode seven, yes, that's the reveal. Right, she was really in a coma all of those other episodes. Now she's awake, and this is her waking life. Yeah. The problem in her waking life is that somebody started to recreate the murders that were in her dreams. Right. Mm. So you, who could, knows you could a, hear you could hear the doctor and you could hear people talking when you were in the coma and that was in, impacting so who, what was who is the person who is really committing these murders based on her dreams? Mm. I know I don't. I know you don't know. I just heard your theory. Yeah, I'm I way know off. you don't I'm, know. I'm way off. <laughs> 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 All right. It's such a it's such a fun story to 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 be a part of though. I'm assuming Ryan came to you with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about that for a little bit. How like you've been in a few other uh, Ryan Murphy uh, projects, correct? Yes, I did. So, um, Scream Queens. I did Monster Dahmer. the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Yep. And one other thing that we did a pilot for that never got picked up, and I was in his very first series called Popular as a guest star. Yeah. So we've worked together a couple times. Nice. You guys have such a fun relationship. How 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 has that been like growing, uh, especially winning all these Emmys together and and just taking over the uh, the TV world? You know, it's so important to me for people that I care about. I consider I have a friendship. I love that I do good work for them. Mm -hmm. I never want to phone it in and rest on the relationship I have with somebody to be like, oh, you know, I could just do whatever. So it's so important for me to get it right, especially for people that I love. And then the awards are just the icing on the cake. That's awesome. Well, it's fun as hell working with Ryan. And it sounds like you got another one. Are we allowed to say you got another one in, in, you can in say the it, works? Because I got, we got I another one in the works. Tomorrow morning. You can <laughs> say it. Yeah, I'm well, doing. I'm doing Ryan's new series. It's called All's Fair. It's about a female, a all female law firm, um, oh, led okay. by Kim Kardashian, um, Naomi Watts, Glenn Close, Sarah Paulson, Tiana Taylor, and me. Oh, oh nice. wow. That's we're talking, the we're talking about a cast. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. We talked about a little bit earlier that you watch yourself on film. Do you have a favorite role that like, you, like in your head, that's your favorite role you've ever done? That's a great question. See, that's tricky because, because for a long time, because I started in comedy, right? I never got the opportunity to play any drama because people thought, oh, we know you, you you're the funny girl. You know, and I didn't get a chance. Mm. So I have things that I did in my funny life that I love because I was in that world longer than this one. But, oh, that's so hard to pick one. But I would say I I did a series on HBO called Getting On. I did three seasons of it. It was an industry, darling, but it didn't catch on to the masses. But when the industry saw me do that, they started to trust me with drama. Gotcha. So that was the role that changed my life because it allowed me to show people that I'm not just a one trick pony. I got a lot of tricks up in here. <laughs> hey, multiple <laughs> tricks. Sure do. It's actually very cool. You were talking about how you started off in comedy. That really wasn't like the lane that you like wanted to choose. We were kind of talking about this on set one day. No, I you never wanted to-, wanted to be funny. Let me tell you, Jason, I told Trav, I said... I never wanted to be funny because I didn't think it was anything. All I did, all funny got me was being in trouble. I got, <laughs> I got suspended at school. Yeah. I got uh-huh. pinched at church. I got, <laughs> <laughs> I, they put talks too much on my report card. So my mama said, well, what was you talking about? I was, I was telling jokes. jokes. <laughs> she, said, she said, go get the belt. I got a joke. You know? So I didn't think funny was anything. I didn't, as a people going to give me money for acting silly. Yeah. And my mother used to tell me that all the time, girl, you so silly. So I didn't think 
I just didn't think it was anything. Well, it, it sounds like you were born to be an actress and a comedian. That's what it sounds I like. I guess so. Yeah. And then I booked <laughs> Reno 911 and everything changed. I was like, y'all going to give me money for acting foolish? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy oh, town. Yeah. So is, is it, let me ask you this. Is comedy easier than drama? What comes more natural or which one do you have to do more preparation Ooh. for? Okay. For me, comedy you use the word easier, but I guess I would, if I had to choose, I would say that because I was born funny. You're just more naturally the, that. The, yeah. the other, the other side, I really have to work to make sure the performance is grounded. I get it right. You know, all of the things. And let me tell you, speaking of mamas, my mama was the one that told me, she said, now, you know, when you do your comedies, now you real funny. But that other stuff, you need to work on that. She told me, she said, <laughs> she I, told I must tell you, hey. my mother said, you find the best class in town and I'm going to work overtime to pay for your classes. That's, that's a, a real good mother right And, there. and that's, that's yes. you know, how we got here because the other is probably harder for me. Yeah. Yeah. Do such, you, a, such a cool story, though. That was one of the things that's really unique about this role in particular with Lois is that, like you said, there's multiple states of her mind frame and you're just killing it yeah do you map all that out like okay now i'm in this mindset as lois where this is happening so i'm going to respond body language and like kind of mentality this way towards this actor the thing of it is jason is that for me the hardest thing about her is where is she in the addiction yes Okay. She suffers from al the alcoholism. Disease, alcoholism. Yep. So is she hammered? Is she hungover? Is she tipsy? Interesting. How many drinks in? You yes. know, does yes. she need a drink really bad right now? And she's trying to, what am I playing in each moment of her yeah. addiction? Because that's the hardest part, you know, for me. Where is she at this point in, in this moment to moment in the story with the addiction? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you nail it. And, and each one you so can cool tell when you, you are like, it, yeah, yeah like, uh, the scene between you, Trav and Merritt, where you're co confronting each uh, other in the booth. That scene is like when electric. I tell you, you came have no out of idea. I was like, "Excuse me, how, what just came out?" Of that? that was like, you know how you know how we always talk about welcome to your NFL moment. Yeah, that yeah. was my welcome to acting moment. Seeing Nisi absolutely kill it in that yeah. scene yeah. and being a part of that scene that was one of that was definitely my favorite one uh, to be a part of for sure. It was so it was so cool to see her. <laughs> <laughs> smack the glass and walk out of there. You know what was funny about that night trap was that I was doing all this. You were like, get up. You're going to rehab. And I'm like, you don't tell me what to do. All of that in intensity. And then they would go cut. And we would be like, -na 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 -na. No. like just in, in the middle of the thing. Because remember, it just like I that. did that video. I was like, look at these culprits right here. These are the ones yes, who get yeah. the we're doing all of this fun stuff, and then they'll be like, and we're back in, in action. And then I'm like, ah. you know. <laughs> so it was, it's, you, you know, once you switch. find it, but once you find it, I could drop back in it mm -hmm. after I've mapped it out and know what I'm doing. And then I could play with y'all, you know, yeah. my, behind the scenes. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yep. And mapping out that addiction was the hardest part. That's so cool. Well, we got the, the season finale coming up tonight yeah. when this airs. I'm looking forward to it. Apparently, uh, my theories FX, have baby. been way off, so I can't wait to see what actually is the case. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. At first, I'm I thought you. Travis was the killer. At first, I thought for sure it was you. There's the one scene where you're in it, and they don't even they, you're walking in the background. I'm like, what's this dude doing? <laughs> He's lurking. I know that. This I know guy. that figure. <laughs> you seen those shadows before, Jason? <laughs> Let me tell you about about people who text me about Travis. They <laughs> all started off saying, you know, we're watching the thing. Is he the killer? Yeah. Just to get you, just to get you on the line texting them. Yeah. And then they like. Well, what do you know about his relationship? Exactly. Said, you know it. You know how it goes. I'm like, I'm like, man, get off that man's business. I'm a vault. I don't say nothing. You, you ain't nothing win. out of me. You're so a real good. win. That's so I mean, y'all just being no 
nosy. Don't ask me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's my goodness. Funny. That's great. I appreciate you always. And every time someone uh, that has a mic in front of you always uh, asks you something like that, thank you for always showing love. You know it's real. And you know that me and Tay are absolutely happy. And I appreciate you always making sure that everybody knows that. So thank you. Honey, I mind my black business. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> I still be here worrying about myself and what I got going. Oh, my goodness. No, you're the best. All right, well, make sure everyone checks out Grotesquerie on FX tonight, the season finale. We're going to keep moving this on to, was it your first Chiefs game? I've heard, like, multiple stories now. Was, when you were with Mama Kels, was that your first Chiefs game you've ever been to? Very first, but, wait, no. Let me take that line back, because I saw y'all play against each other. You were at the Super Bowl? Yeah. I was, or, or I was at that game. Uh-huh. The Super Bowl. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I saw you guys play against each other. Matter of fact, I had to hook up that chair, so I walked out on the field. Oh, All right now. I walked out on the field. Right uh-huh. <laughs> and my sister told me, she said, I don't care what you do. You put on an all-green outfit and you represent me. And so. So you were Eagles? I had on my green sweatsuit. <laughs> I was up there doing this. Fly Eagles fly. I had my green sweatsuit on. Uh, me, JB, my son, we all showed up. Yeah. And yeah, so I got to see you both play together in that yeah. game. Yeah. And then we I like to not went think to about the that game. game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've done some roles and I'm like, God, I wish it would go away. But um, then we all came to see Travis. And let me tell you something. Travis, so we go to the game, right, out here in L.A., and he was just trying to act like he was so professional as a football player. He's like, you know, I don't know if, you know, I'm a, you know, if I'm, we going to take pictures and stuff because I'm so focused. I'm like, this. okay. See? Then he came out there with that stupid mustache. He came out there with that stupid mustache. Oh my trying to, you know, he was all on the field. And, and all his boys was like, yo, there go your girl right there. There go your girl yeah. right there. He going to look over. He was like. I said, ah. <laughs> you know what? I respect your process. I'm just giving you a heart. I'm oh, I love it. I love it too. It's so I good. I totally respect your process. You know uh-huh. what I mean? I appreciate you, it. You got to stay in the zone and you got to do what the people who who paying you want you to do. So yeah, exactly. I'm not I tripping about it. that. I was more offended at the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone now. It's gone now. I see you finally back to looking decent. Exactly. Exactly. I was, uh, I was, I, you never know. I might have just been, you know, having that look for another role or something. You oh, know? Oh, okay. Uh, hey. Okay. <laughs> going my bed. Hollywood over here. All right. So when you, uh, when you were at the game with mom, what was it like? Yeah. You saw Mama Kels at the game too. Do you like watching football games? I do. Um, it was so much fun. She was lovely. She had her homegirl with her. And um, we all took pictures together. And then, you know, you run with a great group of guys. You know, oh, the guys. I appreciate yeah. that, yeah. Um, and they all came and checked on us. You good. You need this. You need Here that. We then we went over to your podcast. Had a suite. Oh, nice. Oh, we, yeah. got our, we got our podcast swag. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, from over there. They treated you right? Back. Oh, yeah. Everybody treated us. So that was, oh, that was Mama Kelsey. She said, we're going over to the, come on. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on. Oh, come yeah. on. You're part so of the family. We went now. over there with her, yes, and got us some swag and all the good things. So everybody really took such good care of us. We had great seats. Thank you. Oh, Thank always. You. Uh, you know it. You know I had and to hook it was, up. Yeah, it was a really good time. I mean, I would do it again for sure. Are you a Rams fan being from LA or a Raiders or who's your team? I like all the LA teams. I all don't the have just one. Like, I like Chargers, all the Rams. I just like watching here. football. Yeah, I don't. I don't break them up. You know what I mean? Sure. But oh, yeah. I, what I, I love the like when you in the game when you when you actually go to a game better than on TV because everybody is so it, dressed up in all they regalia and yes. people are cheering and people booing and yeah. you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. All, all of the the crowd uh, energy, the pageantry. I like that part. Yeah. I'm with you, you on got that. a game. You got a game in Vegas. 
coming up. We just had it last week, and we ended up we ended up beating the Raiders out there in Vegas. Got um, some redemption. Oh, you had year. that game already. I thought it that was game literally was just like last a, week. I thought it was around Thanksgiving. I was gonna pull up. I'm trying to. That, you know what? We might play. We play the Raiders in KC. Yeah, on Friday, right? Yeah. It's so Friday, that. So it's the Friday after Thanksgiving. That one's in Kansas City, though. You're more than welcome. You can come okay. on out hey. to KC. Roll on Enjoy. out. You want to hear some? You want to hear some some electric crowd? Now Kansas want, City has I it want, for you. I want you to roll the red carpet out if I come, come on to now. City. It's there we all, go. Listen, you already know I'm rolling the red carpet out for you. Okay. Every time. Every time. Everybody okay. you're with. You know Is I got you. Is there anything with the it. game? Do you have any questions about football? Is there any? I, I know we just had like a touchdown. Like, are there any phrases or anything you want to ask us about the sport of football that we can help you with? Oh, you know what? I'm glad you asked that because okay. I called. What did I? The thing I got wrong. I said field time, but what is field it? time? Touchdown. 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 Okay, so. I don't really understand false start. Does that Not mean that they moved before the win? I don't know what that means. Yeah. They you're go false so start. You're so on. They have to. So basically, Nisi, if you become set as an offensive player mm-hmm. and you think the ball is getting snapped and you move or flinch, that is a false start. Oh, you can't even flinch. So you're not allowed to move forward before the ball is snapped on offense. And the same thing on defense. You can't cross that line of scrimmage until the ball is snapped. That's called off offsides on defense or encroachment. Uh, uh, like a, a false start is only on the offense, and it's when the offense moves forward or like gives like a an action as if the play's starting before the ball is snapped. And they don't deduct points for that. No, five you just yards. move back five yards. Oh, that's me. There's that's no. There's nice. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. Why do they? I why agree. Do they, I agree. Why? Why do they say they penalize you if you make a touchdown and you celebrate? Like, why do they? Yeah. I gave is, you a whole group of dances to do. Listen. Why won't they let you <laughs> celebrate if you if you get a touchdown? Yep. You see, you're you're speaking on behalf of I think every fan the majority on the of planet. The fans I think everybody and wants NFL to see players. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody wants to see more dancing. You can dance. You just can't twerk. They're restrictive. Can't in some dances and can't do sexual length, dances and two, ex- yeah, you can't only two pumps or three pumps, only two pumps or three no pumps. pumps. You can't no pump. pumps. You can't no pump. pumps. <laughs> you can't <laughs> simulate. You can't no simulate pumps. any type of weaponry. So any type of gun or anything yeah, will get you, you a, <laughs> that will get you a taunting <laughs> foul. Oh, you can't, uh, can't do that. Nah, can't. So now, life. if you but if you do it, do does that mean that they push your team back again, or or what do they do? Yeah, you would you would get a fifteen yard either unsportsmanlike or taunting penalty, and then you get a FedEx, and then you would get fined potentially. You yeah. get a FedEx delivery at your uh, locker that tells you you just got fined for not representing the NFL in the proper way. Yeah, have you Which ever I, got a FedEx? That you oh know, my, it. are you kidding me? You know it. Travis is basically a FedEx. <laughs> he's, he's basically part time FedEx delivery man. Yeah, I like point. the so I like to play the game for the like, love of the I'm game. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna pay my fine. So every now and then, every now and then, I've 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 become more regarded and haven't really done it as much. But uh, my earlier years, I was not afraid to get fined. He was a wild boy. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Oh yes. yes. In many fun. ways, I've gotten I've gotten ejected from a game because I did something silly like that. But that's a story for another day. Threw a flag at an official. Oh wow. Wow. One of my favorite. All right. We're going to ask you some questions now again, Nisi. In our this next segment we have, it's called We Got to Ask, You Don't Have to Answer. All right. Yep. And it's okay. exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we're just going to ask you okay. some rapid fire questions and okay, go. Uh, you decide if you want to answer or not. Go, Jason, go ahead and jump it off. We mentioned it earlier, but can I just ask about Reno 911? That was one of Travis and I's favorite shows growing up. Oh, yeah. You were fantastic. How fun was it working on that show? Because it looked like the cast just loved each other and everything that happened in that show. It was a lot of fun. Great fun. The worst thing about it and the best thing about it was the booty that I wore in it. It was, um, they took a mold of my real butt, magnified it three times. And yeah. in, in the winter <laughs> when we shot, it was great because I was never cold outside. I was always warm. Be nice and warm. Yeah. But in the summertime, I oh, felt no. like I was about to die. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. I can see how that would not be good. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, go. What's the next one? So you had the BBL in the in the Reno Nine. Before it was even popular. Before it was even popular, right? It's too good. Uh, Best and worst audition. My best and my worst are the same audition. Really? How's that possible? It was my very first audition, and I walked in, and I didn't know that you read, and they'll tell you later. So I said, I read the material and the guy said, thank you. I said, hey, you welcome. He said, thank you. And I said, don't mention it. And he, was like, he was like, thank you. You may go. I said, oh, oh. y'all are telling me to leave. What well, did y'all pick me? He was, like, he was like, someone will let you know, dear. And oh I said, goodness. let me know when. I'm broke. I got a baby. I need a job. Like, I mean, I don't. You, you let can't me just keep when. me on ice like this. Yeah. So I, I oh, cut goodness. up. I pointed my finger in their face and told them how mad I was. <laughs> and then they still ended up calling me and giving me the job. It was my very first movie. And I was in it with uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Drew Barrymore. Um, it was called Boys on the Side. And I played Woman in the Diner. There we nice. go. Woman in the Diner. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That's so cool. Who doesn't cool. love a good diner? Who's the better game show host? You or Travis? Me. There we go. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> easy Next question. Fun. I could have told you that one. Uh, you've done everything from movies, TV, game show, reality, uh, voiceover work. If you could only do one for the rest of your career, what would it be? Oh, Jesus. Um, TV. What's the biggest difference from TVs and movies from your perspective? TV, you build a family. Like if you, because it, it goes on for years. Mm. You love these people. You go to their weddings. You you see their kids graduate. You have more of a family. A movie, you in it for a couple weeks and then you like deuces. On to see. the next. So yeah. I do like, you know, like it's the like team. having a team. Yeah, yeah, I like, yeah, I like that part about doing television. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite uh, co-star? Speaking of family, do you have a favorite co-star? Obviously, can't say Travis. Travis is excluded. <laughs> Not that so he was going to be the answer. Ever, but. yeah. She's, <laughs> she's My worked with favorite the best. person that I ever worked with on camera is the one I lay next to every night. Okay. My spouse. When we uh, can share our art together, it's when I'm the happiest. Oh, that's so cool. Love that. Love that. True that's story. That's awesome. I love that. You know I'm a lover, Travis. Yeah, very much so. Because you, you like the team. You like to feel a part of it all. Come on. Do you have a welcome to Hollywood moment? My welcome to Hollywood Kind of how I was Ooh. describing, like, uh, welcome to the NFL moment. Was you know me. what? Yeah, go ahead. Yep, I do. I went to audition for something, and I had all of this stuff on the back of my resume. Okay. Hmm. I didn't know everything I had on the back of it was trash. Okay. And the guy, he was an assistant at the time, said, Girlfriend, come here. He said, I'm going to help you with this. And he crossed all the, he said, Nobody cares that you were the second winner up in a beauty pageant. Let me cross that out. Nobody cares that you, he just, all the little things that I, and they were little things, but I was trying to make my resume look like something. He yeah. crossed everything out. And I said, But I'm about to go in there with my picture and I only have one thing on it. And he said, but it's the right thing. Ooh. And we became dear friends. He became a big deal casting director. And now Very he's cool. the head muckety muck at the network. And it was the moment where somebody reached across the line and was like, come here, baby, because you don't know no better. Let me help you. <laughs> and That's I was awful. like, okay. You know, it was the first time that I felt like I had somebody to just look out for me. Yeah. That's I awesome. believed in you for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, that's awesome. But, oh, wait, here's the other one, and I'm going to squeeze this in. Yeah, please I'm do. I'm a little girl. I'm eight years old. I see this actor on Hollywood Boulevard where all the stars were. And I said, Daddy, that man is an actor. He said, baby, that's Ed Asner. He used to be on the Mary Tyler Moore show. I said, I walked over there and I said, sir, I know you're an actor and you don't know me, but my name is going to be right here on this ground. He was like, yeah, mm. kids, Graham. Scram, so, Graham, I say he, Scram. He, 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 yeah. He walked away and I said, remember my name. I ended up getting a star on the Hollywood yeah. Walk of Fame. Yeah. I send him a letter. We I told say, you, I motherfucker. I don't, I don't know if you remember me. You know, this happened between us. And he said, of course, I know your name. Thank. I'm glad you didn't let me discourage you. 
but I'm not able to come to your ceremony. I said, okay, well, thank you. And the day before his assistant called my team and said, he'll be there. I could not even look at him. I had to just look this way because my (laughs) fake eyelashes was about to fall off from crying. And so Ed Asner, you know, 40 years later, Showed up at my star ceremony. That's no, that's, just, that's unbelievable. And it said to me the power of the spoken word. Yes. I spoke that thing. I mean, you yeah. know, it New took existence. a long time to manifest, but hey, it still yeah, manifested. What? Oh yeah. yeah, yes it did. Damn sure manifested did. beautifully. All right, it's Halloween Eve. Yeah. Yes, Wednesday will be Halloween. Yeah. Do you have a go-to Halloween movie? No, but I go hard with a costume. Okay. Oh, nice. So you go to, have what, you what already is, have you already worn your Halloween costume this year? Um, I'm getting ready to take photos for it when I stop talking to you. Okay. <laughs> nice. What are, what are we going? Are you allowed what, what, to reveal it since it's going to be tomorrow? Or is it a surprise? Or is it a surprise? You want to keep it a surprise? It's cool. You can keep it a surprise. It's a surprise. All right, I'm cool. let it be a surprise. Well, you, well, we'll be tuned in. We'll be tuned in. Yes. Can't wait to we see. We do it. a lot of we do couples costumes. So we always try to figure out some sort of iconic couple. What were you guys last year? Last year, I was Jessica Rabbit. My better half was the detective. Love that. The year that. before that, we were um, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna at the Met. Nice. Okay. Yeah. The year before that, we were Kelly and Nelly from the Dilemma video. Ooh, okay. Classic. Yeah. So we, yep. we figure classic. out some. Yeah, classic. I, you already know. Yeah, we had some uh, teammates, Chris Jones, on the show earlier. I'm, I'm 95 for the for the defense on on the Chiefs. If you're not familiar, he described his first impression of me as Malibu's most wanted. <laughs> you were I was actually in that movie. In that movie. <laughs> do you do you do you agree or disagree? <laughs> I absolutely disagree. You don't yeah. think Travis is B red? He's not B red. <laughs> Tell him to eat. He don't know what he is talking about. No, absolutely not. Absolutely uh, not. Uh, I enjoy a good, a good uh, getting toasted, though. That's the best. Oh, yeah. Last question. Do you have any advice for other athletes trying to break into acting? You know, I would say if you're serious about it, take class because yeah. you want to be prepared. Mm-hmm. You want to know the lingo. You know, if they tell you camera left, what does that mean to you? You want, if they say hit your mark, if they say any of the the language of a set, you just want to be familiar because you don't, you know, you're not going to be as comfortable if you feel like a fish out of water. Right. So I would say prepare. Yeah. And get you a Nisi. I was about hey, to say, I was literally just about to say that. I was like, yeah, make sure you work with somebody as good as Nisi because it makes it a whole lot easier on you. <laughs> Nisi Nash Betts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. And everybody, make sure you check out Grotesquery tonight, the fi- the season finale on FX. Uh, it's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. And uh, congrats on all the success, Nisi. We are so happy and so honored that you came on the show. And, uh, of course. You are the, you are the absolute best. And we're going to be tuned in. We're going to be tuned in on this, uh, this Halloween costume. Oh, you better. That's right. You already know. We you appreciate better. you. Bye, y'all. See you. See you, Nisi. And that wraps up another episode of New Heights. Thank you to our guest, Nisi Nash. Nisi! That's right. Make, and make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel and follow New Heights on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcast. Yes, sir. Reminder, you can listen to the new episodes of New Heights early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Yes, yes. And make yes. sure to check out the debut of Heights Hotline and tomorrow's Wondery Plus exclusive episode. Once again, New Heights is a Wondery show produced by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you, a.k.a. presented to you by Timberland and Vans. How about it? Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. Thanks to our production and crew. We love you guys for making us look way better than where we are. And thank you to all the 92 percenters and everybody tuning in. We'll see you guys next week or tomorrow if you're on that Wondery Plus deal Jason just talked about. How about that? Jets, Jake, the darkness, uh, darkness. check in. We got to get him in here. Come on, Jets. Let's Come go, on Jets, in Jake. here, Jake. Can't wait to hear your uh, take on this week. Man. And the, 
I mean, dude, it's almost just, it's just when you, I, I, every single week. I just think they're gonna they're, they're gonna figure they're gonna it out. They're gonna get they this figured out. Like players. it's gonna happen. They got, fucking, they got a good opportunity. They're playing man. the Patriots. Their coach just called them the softest team. Uh, he just called them soft the week before. They go yeah, out. Man. They've traded for Adams. They've made all these picks. All this stuff has happened, and then uh, it turns out the Patriots got hard somehow and found a way to beat the Jets. What uh, what do you got to say, Jet? Got hard. Just Jake. Chill out. <laughs> Got they, tough. Some, they got tough. They found some Viagra sitting around, and they <laughs> they, swel- they, they swelled up on they them. They fucked me. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> come on! 